Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This talk is brought to you by Ion Connect, the state-of-the-art co-working space and tech lab helps grow innovative ideas to commercialization and market launch. Our speaker is Roy Prevo. Roy is an international speaker, best-selling author, and experienced cruise speaker. He has been a cruise speaker for 12 years and has lectured on more than 40 cruises to more than 20 countries. He is the founder of the Cruise Speak Speaker Academy, and many of his graduates have joined the Cruiser Speaking Fraternity. BBN members and most welcome guests, I invite you now to put your hands together and give Mr. Roy Prevo the warm, warm BBN welcome that he deserves. Thank you, Roger. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy lives and on a cold, wet Vancouver evening to come and see this presentation. Uh, this is um, uh, the name of the, of course, the presentation is Trading Your Speaking Skills for Luxury Cruises. Um, here's what you'll get during the talk. You'll get my baptism of fire. And uh, that is uh, how I got my first cruise, what, what went on in, on that cruise, and the, um, the, re the do's and the don'ts and why you shouldn't do what I did. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about you being an edutainer uh, in Richmond lectures or destination lectures, because there are two kinds uh, the, of lectures that you give on board cruises, uh, the topics that will resonate with people, how to do the research on your topics, um, and your life aboard the cruise ship, the do's and the don'ts aboard the cruise ship, and how to wow your audience, and then at the end, I'll have an offer. So the first word I want to say is gratitude. Now. I say that because I want to thank Roger for having brought me here and given this opportunity. I want to thank you for having come here. And the first thing that I do on every cruise and every lecture is I say, uh, you folks who are on this cruise are in the top one half of 1% of the people in the world. There are 36 million people in Canada, roughly 400 million if you include North America. and there are 7.2 billion people on the planet. So if you're here today on this cruise, that means you are living in the lap of luxury, that you have every opportunity, every possibility in the world, and you have won the human lottery and your karma is set. Now, the significance of that statement and, put, and, and pursuing gratitude when you're on a cruise changes their entire perspective of, of the passengers. And the reason for that is because no speaker has ever done that, has con not confronted them, but has asked them to be grateful every single day for being who they are and where they are. And I've had people come up to me and say, thank you for doing this. And I can assure you that that endears you to the audience because great people are really attracted to grateful people. So I invoke gratitude almost in ongoing within my lectures makes sense it just it's a great way to do it so if that's your first tip on how to endear your audience because that's what you're there for you're there to endear the audience so that they actually engage with you and that they they really want to come back and see you again and i when i do that i also say um i want to really acknowledge the person who's responsible for my being here and being on this ship and being and doing this talk, the person who's the, the person behind the scenes. And that's when I say, and I want to acknowledge my wife, Sarah. And then she waves to everybody. And that's very important for me. And I mean it. Now, that does a couple of things. A, if there's couples on board, so the women love to see a man acknowledging their spouse. Secondly, is I really want to acknowledge my spouse, so that adds in a whole other component. So from the very first part that you have, I suggest that you use gratitude as a kind of the platform and how you initiate your lecture and get it going. So we've won the human lottery. Now you have this Canadian flag back there. If I put that up, then I usually say I'm Canadian forever. And then I usually get a temperature of the audience to see who's from which country and, uh, and then find out how many people on board per country. 
And I usually try and make a joke around it saying, you know, the Canadians are on board, but they keep themselves quiet. They don't like to talk about themselves. <laughs> so that becomes like the, the kind of the, the joke of the moment. Uh, and then Canada for me is the best country on the planet. If you're living in America, probably the same thing. If you're living in the UK, same thing. Um, and so I become an agent for celebrity cruises. And the, uh, so what does that mean? That means that when I send my speakers and introduce them into the celebrity world, uh, mine get priority. And the reason for that is because I have a training program for them. So there is no, um, you know, there's no kind of, well, I wonder if this person's any good or not. They, they come, celebrity have engaged me that they, I'm not officially under there because they don't have agents, but I've had conversations with the person who hires people and they say, we want you to, uh, yes, you send us some, uh, some speakers and we'll, we'll pay close attention to them. And then they provide me regularly the updates on the cruises like for 2020 uh, that require lectures. And they're getting less and less. <coughs> the, the, initially, the very first one I got was had 228 crews that they were requiring speakers for. Well, they send that out to agencies and then to other speakers like myself, uh, but there is no shortage of, of cruises all year long. And so they're always looking for, for lectures and speakers. So here are some of the successful graduates. Melanie Eng, she was, she's got a trip to Alaska. Pierre Charlebois, he's got a, he came to my last lecture. He's a graduate and I got him aboard an Alaska cruise. Um, and then we have Chris, Christopher Dejan, he's from Montreal. He's going to Monaco in the Mediterranean. He has two gigs, two speaking, two 35 minute talks on that, on that cruise. And John Kimmick, who's uh, three years ago took my course, he's been everywhere. I mean, right now he's in Singapore, Dubai, I don't know where the heck he is, uh, trying to communicate with him, but he's, uh, he and his wife, just that's what they do. They just love to cruise. He's former military, um, great guy, accomplished speaker. Adele Thorne, same thing. She was going to be here tonight. She couldn't make it. Uh, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, and, and she went with, with uh, Holland America to, to uh, Australia and New Zealand at one point, and she was hired by the cruise line uh, directly to spend more time and not only do lectures, but also because of her knowledge and her background in, in, um, in that part of the world, uh, they hired her for a, a prolonged period of time to do things. Um, and then there's Brian Fraser, he went to Hawaii. Interesting thing about Brian, his wife was not enamored with cruising. So he went on, he, he took the course, he went on the cruise, he loved it, and she, eh, not so much. So my suggestion is if you have a partner, you might want to ask them, do you think you might enjoy a cruise? Uh, otherwise, you're going to have some issues, and, uh, but that's, that's just normal run-of-the-mill stuff. Um, so I talk gratitude in my opening remarks. I salute the first responders. Um, I usually do that because there are usually first responders in the, in the, in the audience, and it's, they like to be acknowledged. I'm perpetually acknowledging people before I begin my, and I thank them for the service before I begin my lecture, again, engagement. And people, you know, they, they respond to that. And then I recognize my spouse and uh, introduce her to the audience too. And so is it worth it financially to be on a cruise? Well, here's a cruise that we took from uh, Southampton to St. Petersburg. Now, we never got to St. Petersburg because of rough seas. That's the first rule you learn in cruising. Don't have expectations that everything is going to run smoothly because the oceans can be challenging. So we, we did all this cruise in Southampton, went through different areas, and our goal was to get to St. Petersburg. Never got there, and that's a whole other story that I won't share with you this evening. But airfare to London, so this is kind of the money side of it. Airfare to London for one person is $700 US. Uh, two cruise tickets would be approximately, and these change, these can vary, but not by very much, $7,000 per person, $14,000 value, $20,000 Canadian value, and we had to give six 35-minute lectures. Now, I don't know about you, those are pretty good numbers. I'll do that seven days a week and twice on Sunday, okay? Those are the numbers that we're looking at. So if you're contemplating being a cruise speaker, these are the kinds of values that we'll bring to, to, the, to the table. Um, we went from, this has just happened recently, we went from New Jersey to Quebec City for 15 days. Seven, uh, two nights in, uh, overnights in Quebec City, uh, airfare again, um, $700, let's say, whatever. Uh, two cruise tickets, approximately $4,000. Um, value is $6,000 Canadian. Again, we did four 35-minute lectures. Again, think about the, the value of that. 
And so where did it all begin? My introduction to crew speaking. So um, I, was I had hired a coach uh, from Texas who was doing something on crew speak, speaking for free. So I joined his course. And I've joined many courses. And my wife's eyes roll in the back of her head when I used to do that. Because when you're a serial entrepreneur taking courses and trying to make things work, that's part of our lives. Uh, so uh, he, I, I, I joined this webinar and they said, this guy said, you, you can cruise for free. So I approached my wife and said, we can cruise for free. And she said, yeah, sure. Let's see what, let's see what we're up against here. Uh, so I took his course. He, he helped me with the bio. He helped me with the topics. And then he said, I will introduce you to the cruise lines. So I'm at my office. I want you to remember, imagine this now. I'm at my office on a Wednesday. And I get a call from my coach saying, in 10 minutes, you're going to get a phone call from the head guy from Princess uh, because they need an emergency speaker. And I said, great. He hung up the phone. Guy from Princess phones. He says, OK, we want you to go from, um, from New York to St. John, New Brunswick on the East Coast. I want you to do two separate lectures on the way up and one on the way back. And he said, um, are you interested? Well, my first reaction, if you're a speaker and you've never cruised, you don't want to let things go away, do you? You say, yes, I'll do it, sure, fine. He says, great, it's Saturday. You have to cruise on Sunday. We'll fly you red eye from Vancouver to New York and get ready for the cruise. And we want you to speak on the mansions of Newport, Rhode Island and the Halifax explosion. Now, I never even knew there were mansions on Newport, Rhode Island. <laughs> And the Halifax explosion was kind of like in the back of my mind. I remember seeing it in history and whatever. And so it, it was a very dramatic thing for Canada, but I didn't, wasn't that much aware of it. So I hung up the phone and I just had one of those moments of holy, you know what, what did I do here? So I phoned my lovely wife, who's always the savior. I said, so guess what, honey? We got uh, uh, cruises and we're going back. I'm going back to back uh, through, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, but, they want the new Port Rhode Island mansions, and I don't even know what they are. She says, have no fear, dear. We have a coffee table book here, in our because she was working for an architect firm. She says, coffee table book on the mansions of New Port Rhode Island. I said, yes, yes, that's what I want. And so I went online. Now, get this. I went online, and I put in Halifax Explosion, Googled it. Up comes a presentation, a PowerPoint by a teacher in, in um in Halifax, who did this wonderful presentation of the Halifax explosion with notes and the whole thing for free. And I thought, yeah, there is a God. The angels are looking out for me. So my wife comes home, I get the book, and I open up the first page, and it says, the Newport, Rhode Island Historical Society. So the next morning at exactly 5.15, I'm on the phone saying, do you have a DVD of your present of, the, of, the, of that the book? Oh, yes, absolutely. So I phoned my coach and I said, I'm going to use a DVD in the background and I'm going to narrate it. And he said, no, you're not. They can do that. You need to have some knowledge about those mansions. Darn, hang up the phone. And so I phoned my, my um, webmaster who happened to be in Courtney, who I'd never met. I phoned him. I said, Marjorie, you're going to get a DVD tomorrow morning. I want you to pull all of the mansions off the DVD and put them into a PowerPoint. I want you to send them to me because I'll be in, heading to New York and um, I'll be there waiting for them. So she did. And then on the way to New York, I was busily studying my material because you can take all the material in the world, but you have to make it yours and you have to kind of work with it. So I didn't sleep one wink that night, got to New York, got on the cruise, first day, did my presentation on Newport, Rhode Island. Hey, everybody loved it. I said, tell the cruise director how much you love this. So they did. Second one was the Halifax explosion. So I'm up there talking away on the Halifax explosion, and I'm uh, regaling them with the story. Two women walk in, and they sit in the very front row. I'm about 90% or 80% done in my presentation. And they sit there. And um, so at the end of my presentation, what I don't do now, and I don't recommend if, when you're a cruise speaker, you never say, anybody have questions back there? Because typically they'll ask you the question that you don't know the answer to. So what I say to people is, come on up and talk to me after my presentation. I'll be happy to share any information and answer any of your questions. But back then I was inexperienced. So I said, any, any comments? And then one woman says, I have a comment. 
this is one of the women. I have a comment. She raised her hand and I went, oh, I forgot something. Or I made a mistake. Or you know how your brain goes. So she gets up and she says, I want you to know that when the, my grandmother was in the house overlooking the bay when the Halifax explosion happened, and she said, my grandmother was blown out of the house and the house was blown away into the street. My grandfather was working in the foundry, which was several couple of miles away. By the time he got to where his house was, the house was gone. And he said to somebody, you know, well, where is what's happening? And they said, well, if you want to find the body of your wife, you go to the school basement because the school was removed, but the actual basement was there. And she said, he went in and they were lined up corpses covered with sheets and he uh, he was walking up and down and he spotted her shoes and her foot was was going like this and he went to a medic and he said my wife's alive come and get my wife uh, you know revive her and she the medic did and this woman said if that would not have happened i would not be standing here in front of you today now i don't know if you believe in angels but that serendipitous moment it's never happened ever since where that kind of synchronicity would happen and that was a moment where i thought wow is that crazy because everybody swarmed her and you know talking to her and trying to get information from her so that was my very first experience in cruising now here's a lesson that you'll learn first you never become too eager to take on a cruise for instance if princess said nine lectures on your first cruise you got your work cut out for you nine lectures in 10 days from now that you're going to be on the cruise is suicide is killer because you don't have the time and besides you're supposed to have some fun on this cruise it's not you're not going to be stuck in your room you know kind of making uh, putting presentations together so the key is don't take on a cruise too short term you can take on a cruise like say four, three or four months out and you put the lectures together and you have the time to do it and you have the time to rehearse and do all those kind of things. Unless you're a super incredible speaker uh, and who doesn't have too many you know, smarts like I was at that time, uh, I just got lucky, I tell you. And because you only have one opportunity with cruise lines, if you blow it on your first gig or out, uh, you probably will never get asked back again to do another cruise with them. So, so don't make my mistake and get the proper coaching. We're out there. So get proper training. And remember this, this, these very good words of wisdom. If you're going to walk through a minefield, follow somebody. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to find, if you're going to do something and find the person who's done it and take their training or take their, their, their help. So that was kind of like my very first baptism of fire. So where have we cruised? Panama Canal three times, Caribbean five, Hawaii three or four times. Uh, Mediterranean once, we've done actually twice now, Baltic, uh, we, look, Alaska, New York to St. John, Australia, New Zealand, that's over, not, I'm not even counting a lot of them, so that's over a 12-year period. We've kind of traveled around, and we love it. As my wife says, it's a great gig if you can get it. And so, where are we cruising in 2020? We're going to the Caribbean on January the 20th or 30th, Mike, is it 20th or 30th? Um, the Caribbean in March, again, the Amalfi Coast, Greek Islands, May 30th. Uh, I want to talk about that. That is on the new uh, celebrity uh, edge, and uh, I'm doing two 35-minute lectures for a 12-day cruise. And I tried to get my family to come with us, so I said, I went to a travel agent who is very well versed in the whole world, and I said, would you like to give them the best possible deal? The best possible deal was five thousand plus dollars U.S. per person to do the cruise. Needless to say, my family are not joining us. You know that's just the way it is. Uh, Portugal, Canary Islands in September, and then Caribbean back to Caribbean next December twenty-seven. So five, not bad. It's a pretty good gig. Um, this is your typical person on a cruise. Now, typical person today is probably retired. I would say the higher demographic is retired, but these people are leaving an insane life and they're coming into the bubble of the cruise world. I tell you that because um, most topics don't fit cruises. They are there for a good time, for a fun time. They don't want their brain to be rattled by a bunch of stuff, certainly nothing negative. 
You never talk sex, you never talk politics, ever, or you'll learn very quickly that that can get you into a lot of trouble, and you don't talk religion. So if I do a presentation on a particular subject that has political matter in it, I always start my presentation by saying, I'm going to show you some political stuff. I do not aspire to that. I'm giving you information. This is not a personal thing. So you want to make clear about that. Um, and then there's the uh, passenger feels like this. It just, you know, we, you know the world we live in, and uh, and they're retired and they want a good time. So that this is how how they often feel when they come on board. You do not want to be responsible for reminding them of the world they left behind. They're living in a, in a particular wonderful environment. This is a typical picture of, uh, this was a Holland America cruise that we did. I just want to show you this because this is how the, the um, this is your crowd coming in. I had about 15 minutes left before I started, uh, before the presentation. I typically go out and greet everybody and say hello. Not everybody, but I you know, ask people who they are and what they're doing. Um, and this is me in front of that same audience. Um, so you can tell nothing spectacular there. Uh, I've changed my slides a lot because uh, we now, back then I could put a lot of script in, now they want video and, and more engagement and more enhanced process. Uh, so you're becoming, uh, your life as a crew speaker. You build some humor into your talk. You do not become a comedian, unless you are a comedian. And if you're not, there are ways to do that. Uh, I, I've, I've been speaking for, you know, I'm a professional speaker for the last 20 some odd years. And so I have developed a, a kind of a, a shtick and I engage people and have fun with them, poke fun at them. I can do that because I have the experience. If you don't, I suggest that you put in some funny cartoons. You drop in a cartoon in the middle of it. Uh, one of the things I used to do, I haven't done it for a long time, is if I get a particular dry subject, I drop this beautiful bikini clad girl on walking on a beach in the middle of my presentation. So that pops up and I said, now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, he made a mistake. And I'm saying to you, this is for all the men in the audience by about now your eyes are glazing over from my dry material. I thought this would give you a jolt of energy and here you are. And then so the second one is, uh, and I said, we've taken enormous surveys to find out that uh, women say, yeah, nice of you to put a bikini clad woman up there. What about us? And so I put Matthew McConaughey and his six pack. I said, this is for you. And then the slide right after that is, three old codgers walking on the beach and one says, it's Thursday. Um, and the other guy says, uh, so am I. And the third guy says, let's, get a, let's have a beer. So, you know, kind of add to the, the humor of the whole thing. Now, m women, if you're doing the, the kinds of those lectures, you have to choose something that's more appropriate for you and that would kind of apply to whatever you're doing. So you create humor around the presentation. So enrichment lectures. Enrichment lectures tend to be timeless and they apply to almost any cruise. Uh, we do several uh, that are kind of almost generic on any, any cruise you can go on. One is the history of cruising, which we do. Uh, they accept that anywhere. So you just choose a couple. You don't, you know, you, you have three or four in, the, in your back pocket. They may arrive at you like they did for us with St. Petersburg, where they said, we can't, we're not getting in. I, we get the call at 6.30 in the morning. If you're going to be a cruise speaker, this is what you have to get used to. It doesn't happen often. 6.30 in the morning, cruise director calls and says, um, we're not going into St. Petersburg. We have a lot of, we're gonna have a lot of angry people here. We need another lecture from you. Can you put something together? And I said, yeah, I suppose I could, but you know, I, my, my talks were all geared to that area. And so if I pull one more into it, what am I gonna use? So I did another one on the Greek philosophers that changed the world. It was a previous presentation. I added to it and I won't give you details, but you just know that enrichment, you should have a couple of enrichment lectures in your back pocket. Could be Hollywood exposés, it could be political exposé, it could be spy scandals, you know, spy, spy stories, whatever it is that you feel attracted to. And then the enrichment also has, you know, uh, cultural history, espionage, you know, forensic crime, that's big now, CSI, they love that kind of thing. Uh, maritime history, world history, all of this kind of uh, activity. So there's just so many that you can pull from, whatever you, you feel that, that would work for you. The highlight, your expertise. Now, if you have a particular expertise, assuming like we had one individual who um, came to a, a, my a, a workshop where he was a past police inspector. 
Now you don't have to take your own case. You can say, I was part of. And so you pull all the, you know, pull stories. You know, that weird and wacky, wonderful world of, um, of crews, of, of, um, of crime scenes or, you know, criminals that didn't get it, you couldn't shoot straight or something, whatever it happens. So these are the kinds of expertise if you have, you can add some, you can create a series. We had, we had one guy who's a, a NASA scientist. So he had Earth, the long picture, right down to the moon landing, and he had five different lectures. They were fascinating. If you have that, then that works for you too. But it doesn't really uh, matter. If you have that expertise, you, you put it in there. Uh, if you have you ever published, you could publish in a law blog. You could publish it anywhere. If you publish something that goes into your bio, and that's what they love to see. So yes, a published author, that's a big part of it. Um, yeah, another one is your career education connected to your lecture. Same kind of concept. If so, this should be part of your presentation. Destination lectures, absolutely. Titles that are specific to location. They're easy to get. You can Google them online. You can say, you know, the, the most weirdest facts about uh, Lima, Peru, and it'll pop up as much as you want, and you can build your lecture around that. You don't have to be an expert on this stuff, folks. Yes? During your lectures, is there a Q&A session? Uh, well, that's where you say at the end, come up and talk to me, and I'll answer any question. But it's not during? No. no, you don't. So uh, nobody can ask you a really deep question? No. Well, I mean, they can if they want to come up, and then, then you can say, I have no idea what you're talking about. So you don't want to, you don't want to expose yourself as being a, uh, uh, you know, you're caught in the middle of something. Now, if perchance on a lecture, uh, at a lecture, if you get a smart, smart ass, <laughs> who actually decides he's going to take you to task, and you'll find those, you might find, I haven't had them for a while because I'm waiting for them. So if you find somebody, uh, you can start your, your lecture by saying the things that I just mentioned about acknowledging the people around you. You can say, by the way, I have a limited knowledge on the subject matter that I'm going to be sharing with you today. And I'm sure some of you have much more knowledge than I have. Feel free to come up afterwards and tell me your story. So what does that do? The guy who's sitting there waiting to go, I'm going to kick his butt around the block. Now he has nothing to say because you've just diffused the situation. He can't come up and say, Oh, by the way, you know, then he makes himself look like a fool in front of everybody. So that's a really good tip. You make sure that you, you prepare the audience so that you don't get these people who will do that for you, uh, to you. Uh, and I used to do that. Hey, anybody got questions? And then somebody at the far end, he's on his laptop, you can tell, and you forget, oh, here we go. He's already Googled something that I've said and he's going to misconstrue it. So you, be, you're always very, you always make sure you invite them up and you have always five or 10 minutes to do that. Um, title specific to location, culture. Build as much culture as you can into your talks about a specific destination. Because the cruise lines don't do it. I mean, what they do is they promote their, their, uh, their tours and their, their retail that they're connected to, and you're just offering an extra added part to it. Uh, little known facts about the area uh, or about the, the city or whatever, wherever you're going, obscure eccentric information. I like to look for obscure, I like eccentric people, I like taking people's biographies and build them into the, my, my lectures, and they love that. Uh, you know, they just want to know, they want to have fun. And they want to be able to go to have dinner that night and say, do you hear that wonderful, tall, bald, good-looking guy, how wonderful he was? That's what you want to have happen. Or a woman, who's a gorgeous woman who came up, whatever. You, you just, you, you know what you're working with. And then it creates anticipation. So if you put a really catchy title in there, uh, every day you get the, um, the on different ships, they have a different, what do they call it on, on celebrity? I know. Anyhow, it's a list of the items for the next day, and you usually get it about nine o'clock at night, and that's only the time you'll know where you're speaking. Now, you typically know what your title is, but sometimes even they follow that up sometimes. I have to tell you a funny story now. This was on a cruise about five years ago. Oh, more than that. And uh, we were doing a Hawaiian cruise. So one of our talks was the origins of the Hawaiian shirt. And so that was the name of the cruise, which made sense. You know, how the Hawaiian shirt got going, got its name. So we come back to our room at night about 9.15. And sure enough, the, the next day itinerary is sitting in there. So the first thing I, you do is you open up, say, let's see what, 
what my title is going to be and where I'm going to be presenting it and at what time I'm going to present it. Because it can be presented at 9.30 in the morning or 2 in the afternoon or whenever. So you, you want to know that. So I look at it and I go, wow. <laughs> so I phone the cruise director. And I say, uh, he says, yeah, what can I do for you? I said, you have a little bit of a challenge here on the, in your program. He said, why? I said, well, it's the origins of, and you took the R out of the shirt. There's no R in the shirt. <laughs> and he said, are you kidding me? I said, no. In the meantime, he had sent all these programs out to like however many state rooms and rooms in the, so this was already delivered. And he said, I have been proofreading this stuff for five years and I have never had a one error ever. And tonight's the night. So he had to have people scurry and pull all the programs so that people don't get them and then reinstate. You can imagine the chaos. So that's the, what happens on cruises. You just never know, you know, you just have to pay attention and roll with the punches. And so, uh, and Quebec City is a classic example of, of, uh, of destination. I was born in Quebec. I was in Quebec in the, in, when the separation process was happening. I was in Quebec all during that era. So for me, a destination talk was like, are you kidding me? That's my hometown. I could, I could stand up and regale for like hours about Quebec and that's what I, I do. But your destinations is the cultural thing, what's going on and making sure that you're, you're engaged in, in that particular destination that you're going to. And their celebrity in particular are focusing on destination. They don't want um, so much enrichment, they want more destination talk. So the so this is us on a New Year's Eve. Now I have always I, it might not have been New Year's Eve actually. This could have been any time. Uh, you see that that little glass thing behind? That's uh, champagne glasses, and they have a tree of champagne glass, and they pour champagne that goes all the way down, and they take a picture with the captain. And I'm a big believer in uh, bringing back sophistication and refinement to the human spirit. And so I take my my uh, my, my tuxedo at every opportunity and every opportunity I can, I've been I've been accused of being a waiter I've been people try to give me money as a tip which I take put in my pocket but I mean I, I just I, I'm a big believer in that stuff so that's us uh, on that particular cruise uh, this is me totally surrounded by people can you see all the people there <laughs> up on the top deck uh, that was Hawaii I believe and uh, and we're just sitting out in the, on the, in the hot tub and the world's going by and it's wonderful in the evening. Um, this is beautiful Tahiti. Uh, we, we love Tahiti. It's, it's just one of our best places to go. And if ever you get that opportunity, uh, you should put that on your list. Um, and these are the singers in Tahiti sitting around the, the uh, um, you know, just playing music, having a great time. And this is a restaurant. The reason I put that picture in there is that coffee we're having is about $7.50 America. To have a cup of coffee in Tahiti. Now, here's the key about that. Now, this is something you learn as you do this. Is I we're in Tahiti, and like the restaurants are grotesquely expensive, like really expensive. And so I go up to somebody because I speak French, and I said, "Look, where do the locals eat?" Ah, so they have food trucks down by the down by the ocean. Every night they have all these food trucks down there. They go down for about a tenth of the price. They serve all kinds of wonderful food. The families are there. The dancing is going on. Now, the more average tourist would never figure this out, that that's what goes on. So that's where the, we went down there every night that we were there and had wonderful food, wonderful meals. Um, just, that's the way it is. And your life on board, you are in a suite in the crew area, which means that you are literally in a, an officer's suite. And we have the porthole and uh, we have a, a, a queen bed and, you know, we don't have a lot of the amenities that the suites have. Uh, for the passengers, but we, we're, we're treated exactly like that. We have a room attendant, we have all of these things. Uh, we have 20% off drinks in the spa. And now that 20% is on the, for the spa is on port days. So when you're at sea, they don't want to see you anywhere near there because that's when they make their money. And then we have fine dining in the evening with the passengers and there's no lectures on port days uh, and entertainment of course is free and it's wonderful. So, how are the four steps to becoming a cruise speaker? The first one is you choose a cruise three to four months out. You don't do it so you, you know, if they say, well, I've got a cruise in six weeks. Well, if you don't have your lectures together, don't put yourself under that pressure. You know, you refuse to do it. You just make some reason I, I, can't, I can't be available. 
Uh, you create destinations and or lecture, enrichment lectures for the itinerary. As I say, destination is what they're looking for. You call the entertainment director for the cruise line and you offer your credentials to present your credentials. And then you have to follow up with them regularly because you are one among however many speakers there are and they, uh, they're, they get swamped. I mean, they're, they're, you're, you're not on their radar. So you have to perpetually keep in touch with them and then one day it clicks in. So princess, they could give the guest covers tips. The speaker doesn't have to cover tips because you have to tip your folks. Uh, celebrity tips come from both of us. Like these room attendants are so over, overworked in my view. They work their tails off from 12 hour, 14 hour days. Sarah and I, we give tips to these folks willingly and happily. We don't, we don't make a distinction. You don't really have to do it, but we do it. And we really, um, you know, that, that's kind of our sense of how these folks, they, they really work very, very hard. Yes. Is there, is there like a percentage that you just like? Uh, there is a percentage and they typically, depending on the cruise line, will tell you what the percentage is. It's usually 10, 10 to $15 a day that you give. Um, so on a six day cruise is a hundred dollars or whatever, or a 10, a 10 day cruise. You can give a little less if you want to. We tend to give, you know, so that's divided between both of us. Uh, we tend to give something of, of a, a, you know, a reasonable tip that they really appreciate. Yes. Um, we wanted to know if we're going to spend with the US currency on your, on your trip? Uh, so the question is, do you, uh, is US currency? Yes, it is. Yes. They, they, they don't take any dollars. It's US <laughs> currencies everywhere you go, really. Um, any other questions? So uh, where do you do the research for your topics? Well, you can do Wikipedia, Google, YouTube, SlideShare. We, we pull them almost from anywhere. Like we've gotten to the point where Sarah, who does such a fabulous job of, of researching this stuff, we'll pull up the most obscure thing. We'll be watching PBS one night. We'll see something go, there's our next lecture right there. So you're always looking for what's the next topic that I can speak to that's current or not so current, but that would be of interest to people. So we're always kind of keeping our eye out for different lectures, or we might see a story in the, in the Vancouver Sun about somebody, and we'll look at it and see, you know, particularly around military, uh, people love that. Now, a man would go after the look at it from military, but there's a lot more women coming on board cruises who are speakers, and celebrity are promoting women like crazy. Like that's the major focus. So if you're a woman who's interested in speaking, this is your chance because they want women uh, in all categories. Uh, captain, they want them, uh, like all the senior management on board, they have one cruise happening in 2020 where it's all run by women. And that's, that's stated and they, they just wrote about that about a couple of weeks back. So these are the kinds of research resources. I can mean, come on, put anything in Google and you'll get hundreds of pages on it. Uh, so here we are New Year's Eve. Now this is a trip. This is a Caribbean warm wonderful caribbean breezes coming in and they do they're playing uh, calypso music on the top deck and everybody's going you know it's just like a wild party and the warm air the the non vancouver january <laughs> weather is just it's amazing and so we we seek every year to try and get on a new year's eve cruise that's why in january um we couldn't get one for for uh new year's eve this year 2020 beginning, but uh, next, at the end of 2020, that cruise, we're, over, we're doing a New Year's cruise. That's what we look for. And here's some friends, by coincidence, from Vancouver. He's a member of our Rotary Club, my Rotary Club. And he and his wife were on a cruise. It was her uh, significant birthday. And so they joined us and we had, you know, we spent a lot of time together on board. Just part of what it is. So your lecture portfolio. You need a YouTube video of yourself in front of an audience with a lot of energy. And uh, that's very important. They want to see you like talking, like, I'm talking now. This would be significant. I could use this if I was really interested in, in sending in a video to a cruise line. Uh, to be someone who's engaged, you're, you're, you're passionate about it, and you have variation in your voice, and you've got to go with it. You just look, folks, they, that's what they look for. Uh, and the lecture titles of your chosen cruise, that's, who you, that's your, in your lecture portfolio, and a brief personal biography, which is what I work on 
Uh, it's a bio unlike your business. It's a bio unlike your, your um, anything you've done. This is a bio that has to kind of speak to their parameters, but keeps it open-ended so that you can go anywhere in the world with that bio and that you're not stuck in going to Alaska if you say, well, I'm an Alaska expert. Well, that's what you lock yourself into. You don't want to do that. You want to create a bio that's reflective of the world in general, but has enough specificity in it to make it work for you. And so here's the secrets to growing your audience. You thank people for attending your lecture. Thank you for coming. There's a lot of activity on this ship. I want to thank you all for coming and that hopefully that $20 that I gave you to come to my lecture, you spend well. That's a joke I throw in there. I get a few laughs on that. More laughs than I'm getting here, but that's okay. Um, you meet the other speakers on board. Make sure that you meet with them. And because you, you can learn from them. I attend all the other lectures. Now we have, a, I have a code. I'll say to the lecturer, uh, by the way, um, if you'll promote me, I'll promote you. So at the end of my lectures, I always say, you know, come and see Luke's, uh, a uh, presentation this afternoon, he's a great speaker and he'll have some great material for you. And he does a similar thing. So you're building the audience. That's what you want. That's what you need. Uh, people want to see you come back and they want you coming back again and again. And you offer to promote them. Um, you ask them to do likewise. And then you invite people to your lectures whenever you strike up a conversation. Could be anywhere. You know, within four sentences, I'm saying, well, I'm a lecturer on board. Oh, you're a lecturer. Wow. I have groupies <laughs> coming to me. Follow me around. It's not easy, guys. You know, I have to tell you, having groupies, I, I should write a book on how to, how to avoid groupies. <laughs> um, and then you, you thank people for who attend your lecture in a perpetual state, um, who, people who reattend, people who come back again and again, you're saying, how many people here have uh, read my last lecture? Wow, thank you so much for coming back. Obviously I said something that made you come back or whatever, you can put in some, add your own, your own words to it. Uh, the dues aboard the ship. Do promote your events shamelessly at every opportunity without being a pain about it. But you can find ways of talking when you're talking to people, just saying, you know, I'm a lecturer on board. And, oh, you are? Well, yeah, because we're on tomorrow at 2 or whatever. Typically, we're at 2, but look in your program and see what time we're on. Um, and you're, at, you're an ambassador for the cruise line. So you want to start um, having pictures of yourself on Facebook with a lampshade on your head and you're a speaker on board. You're off at the next port. Okay, so you, you are an ambassador for the cruise line, and they'll tell you that. Um, you are, you accept thanks graciously. Thank you so much, you know, that's just the way that, that's part of that gratitude I was referring to. You accept that, that's just, um, and you mingle with your audience. Before my audience, if I get there 15 minutes early and multiple people show up, I'll go and say, where are you from? Is your first cruise? Thank you for coming. Uh, look forward to, you know, uh, you know, have you seen anything that so far that you really enjoyed? And, uh, and so you just engage in banter with them. And that's important because that, that'll bring them back too. Um, you attend other speakers' events. I have mentioned that earlier. Uh, you offer to be as helpful as possible to the cruise director and activities director. I always say to the cruise director, whatever you need, wherever you want me to go, wherever you want me to be, I'm there for you. Their job is very difficult. You do not want to make their job more difficult. And the, you know, I have a reputation now in, in celebrity as being someone easy to work with, prepared to help, prepared to do whatever is necessary and uh, can do something on the spur of the moment. And so that's what they look for. And so I'm within the cruise director's activity director world, because I found that out of the last cruise, uh, the guy who was, who was the activities director, he said, I didn't know who you were. So I put the word out to all the ships and they said, he's the guy. So you want to get to have that reputation. Yes. Do you get, uh, do you and Sarah get uh, to be the ship's representative on the land trips? Ah, that happened to us once in Israel uh, where they, uh, they asked me to, I went down, to, yes, you can go down to the activities desk and you can say, look, if you need some help on the, the tour, I'm here and available. We don't do it often enough actually. They usually, the crew gets the first preference, but in this particular day, I don't know what happened, but they allowed us. So I got this 225 or $250 um, tour for free. Because I was helping, I did nothing, frankly. I mean, did very little, just herded people along. You just there. Yeah, just sort of as, as an assistant. And so you do very little. Usually the guides are very, are very good. 
So is it possible? Yes. So I would say to you, if you were going to be a cruise speaker, then you know, go to the front desk and say, I'm, <coughs> I'm willing and able to do this. And it may happen. It may not have. Who knows? You're there to help, to serve. And so remember this, you have to be very flexible because the bigger the ship, the more chances things are going to go crazy. Now, there's a lot that goes on in the back scenes that the passengers never know about. Uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes you say to yourself, we're lucky to be afloat here. Um, and I say that in the kindest way because there's a lot of stuff that goes on. So um, be prepared, be flexible. And uh, yeah. Now, here's the next one. Don't. Don't whine or complain about your situation. If things happen to go sideways, do not talk to passengers. You don't know who you're talking to. Um, and don't tell your passengers about your arrangement. So you'll get passengers who say, oh, so are they paying you to be a, a, a lecturer? And my wife says, sorry, we're not allowed to talk about that. And people are okay with it. Don't discuss your particular situation with, um, with any of the, of the passengers at all. They don't have to know, and it just you, you save yourself some grief. Uh, don't spread gossip or speak negatively to an, about anyone uh, on board. Common sense. You don't talk about anybody else. You, that's, you do not discuss sex, politics, or religion. I made reference to that earlier. America is very polarized. You get into a political discussion, you're in trouble. We've seen it happen. I don't get involved in that, but I've, seen, I've heard of speakers being put off in the next port because they got political. You have to vote for so-and-so. You're out of here. Now, another guy was talking about penis jokes. Cruise director told us directly, he said, the last guy who was here, we threw him off at the, the next port. He was, you know, offending people, and rightfully so. Uh, so, and don't take up the cruise director's time. I'm here for you. Let me know. End of story. Now, if you have a specific incident that, that you need to take help, care of, by all means, um, you know, help out or do whatever, but don't take them up their time in a, indiscriminately. And don't get drunk and try to be the life of the party. Your party will be over real quick because, you know, with social media and everything else today. So there we are, zip lining in Costa Rica. Once. Now, the reason that slide is up there, this is a Queen, America, this is a Queen Mary tour. If you go down to um, California near, near uh, San Diego, the Queen Mary's parked there. So if we want to do a thing on the Queen Mary, I take pictures of these sign, these uh, uh, posters, and that becomes the, the fodder for another presentation. Now, we haven't done that, but it can happen. So you can literally, from that presentation, do a whole thing on, on the Queen Mary. Here's the, 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 uh, cap, the deck, I'm sorry, of the, uh, of the Queen Mary. And this is her, the exercise room back then. Have a look at that, folks. Doesn't that just kind of engender a lot of, ex a lot of fun to want to get out there and do a lot of exercise? That's, that's her old exercise room. And this is a captain's room. Um, which is not bad, you know, for back then. That was a fairly, open, you know, okay. And here we are in the, the um, on Coronado Island. So here's the trip to the Jerusalem and the Holy Land. This is the Baha'i Garden, and I shouldn't be playing this video, but the, that is in Haifa, and that's the other direction in Haifa, going up the hill. This is the Baha'i faith was chased out of Iran when the, the mullahs came in, and Israel accepted them. And they, they went to, into Haifa and they built this spectacular garden. It's just, you can't, pictures can't even do it justice. And they built one in India and the, it has more visitors per year than the Taj Mahal. So that just gives you an idea. Um, here's a busy street in Gethsemane uh, from the Garden of Gethsemane. So the reason I put that in there is because you have Mercedes on one side of the street and goat herders on the other side of the street. Just kind of the contrast of life there. And this is the Holy Church of the Holy Sepulchre. That's where five different religions are in one church. And it's, you know, it really, if you are a, a spiritual person or are interested in religions, this is the place to go. And this is where Christ has apparently put his hand to help himself up when he was going through the crucifixion process. And so they have that put it there. So I had to, of course, put my hand in there. Um, this is uh, five people peeing at a wall, as 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 Roger would say. <laughs> it's a wailing wall, for gosh sake! So he says, "I like that slide of these old men." And you may, might notice a guy with the white yarmulke on his head, because I turned around to take a picture, and 
he was not impressed that I was doing that. I don't know, he, thought, he probably thought I was desecrating his place, but anyway, that's a whole other story. Um, so, so far, I've taught you what it's like, to, the whole story around this whole process, and, and it'll only take you about, uh, so far in becoming a cruise speaker. So if you're watching this online, anyone who's watching this online, I will give you a 30 minute time to chat about this, to talk to you about how you can uh, become a cruise speaker, and you can email me at roy at royprevo.com, and we'll set you up for the time to chat. That's it. That's it. Roy, thank you very, very much for that information. Now you can come and join us. See, you're kind of taller than me. Yes. And I need also to thank Ion Connect for making this production possible.